Hello, denizens of the internet. Welcome to my outdoor grotto. So today I'm going to cover the top 10 most important personal computer applications ever. <laughs> my criteria to make this list was that the software had to run on a computer designed to fit on your desk and be priced at $5,000 or less. Now, I meant the computer not the software. So software for the Xerox Alto and the Lisa would not make this list. It had to be software that ran on what we euphemistically called a personal computer. Then I had to sort out whether being first was more important than being the most iconic or influential or just plain worked. That was a tough one, as you will see. I did not include music creation, 3D software, or games as much as I wanted to put Zork on the list, and sorry, no Amiga stuff. At the very start of the personal computer era, I would say writing, programming, counting, and connecting uh, were the main things you did with an Apple II or CPM-based computer. So here is my list of the 10 most important pieces of personal computer software. It kind of starts off chronologically, but then I stopped caring. So, in the beginning, there was Microsoft Basic. Bill Gates and Paul Allen had the affrontery to actually charge for their software, and they were hated for it. That was actually one of the things that made it revolutionary and started the computer software business. Basic lets you program things with your personal computer in a very easy way. And while BASIC has waned, the fact that the licensing of AppleSoft BASIC uh, saved Microsoft from going under was profoundly significant, and therefore AppleSoft BASIC slash Microsoft BASIC deserves to be first on this list. Connecting computers over phone lines using 300 baud modems, how quaint was that? But seriously, this was one of the most exciting things you could nerd out on, connecting to others over phone lines. And by connecting, I meant starting up your copy of Novation Cat or Z-Link and listening to the modem's high-pitched squeals and then nothing, then hanging up and calling your friend and asking which protocol they were using and which way their X and O was set or something like that, I don't remember. You'd spend a half an hour yelling at each other before finally making the connection only to have your mom yell that she wanted to use the goddamn phone and get off the line. The winner in this modem category goes to Hayes. Fooled you. Of course it had to be Hayes. What do you think? Email. Probably the killer app of killer apps. I'm putting it third chronologically, but it's number one on this list. But it's a messy category because do you count the email you could send and receive over CompuServe and AOL? They were walled gardens at the time. You couldn't send a message to or from you know, between BBSs. You had to dial in, pick up your messages, answer them, hang up, and dial into another service if you used multiple. If your service dial-in number was long distance, uh, you'd dial in, pick up your messages, hang up, respond offline before reconnecting and, and then sending them. Seriously. This is the stuff we had to put up with, and it was wonderful. But was that email, or was that just really forum chat? Just to put a stake in the ground, I'm going to say that email, as we know it today, happened after the post office protocol for TCP IP was born in the 80s, and the best application at the time was Eudora. VisiCalc, the first killer app that drove computer sales into the mainstream, this was a monstrously historic achievement and made your jaw drop when you saw it for the first time. Conceptually brilliant and executed brilliantly. Quickly, accountants everywhere were buying Apple II computers just for VisiCalc. Now, Lotus 123 eventually took over and turned VisiCalc into a computing footnote, but it did not diminish the historic, groundbreaking importance of VisiCalc. So let's now talk about word processing. As a category, it was a killer app because word processors really turned the personal computer into an everyday tool for the masses, not just accountants. Word processors were a truly disruptive technology. It was the beginning of the end of stenographers and the typing pool. So let's go through some of the candidates. Apple Writer, Electric Pencil, WordStar, WordPerfect, Microsoft Word, Apple Writer, was more than serviceable, but there was soon a clamoring to get CPM 
uh, on your Apple II to gain access to WordStar. And do you know who accomplished that? Microsoft with their Z80 soft card, their biggest money maker in 1980 and the second time the Apple II saved Microsoft's bacon. Now WordPerfect would eventually take over from WordStar, primarily because there was nothing that could touch it for legal work. It was a function key monster. In fact, if I went back in time and grabbed an MS-DOS computer, like a 286, uh, with WordPerfect, and, and also brought along a legal secretary, they would destroy any person trying to execute a similar legal document in Microsoft Word today, and in half the time. But while WordPerfect was part of a triumvirate of dominating applications, which included Lotus123, Ashton Tate's DBase, I will have to give this category to WordStar. Okay, I mentioned databases. So you can't talk about personal computing without discussing databases. The big dog was DBase by Ashton Tate. Databases are important. I'll bet if you go to some old auto parts place right now and they are still using a green CRT to check their parts catalog, I'll bet that's still DBase. Personally, I hated DBase. Uh, it was a really unfriendly environment to work in with horrible design limitations. I used Foxbase, a, a DBase clone, for many years and really enjoyed it until HyperCard came out. Yes, HyperCard is a database. I fell in love with that crazy, underpowered, slow application, but I could add graphics, animations, control laser discs, play MIDI sounds, audio files, telnet into deck mail through a Shiva net modem so mail would come right into my mailbox automatically without any programming. Apple did not know what HyperCard was or what to do with it. We did. We did. And they just let HyperCard die. Stupid farging bastards. So. Let's now talk about access, Microsoft Access. If you were a business that used Windows and you used Access, I would say that Access was what really entrenched Microsoft in the business world. The IT departments hated it, but every company had their Access fanboys who would build Skunk Works applications. It was garbage, but because it was included free with Microsoft Office, it was free garbage. And when MSSQL came out, it took decades to remove the stench of access databases from corporate hard drives. It may not have been first, but no one could dispute access's ubiquity and importance. There is no doubt that Photoshop is so entrenched that it even has a verb form, Photoshopping. But it wasn't the first desktop imaging editing software. That was Image Studio, distributed by Letraset. In fact, they hired me to demo it all over North America and the UK. The oohs and ahs I got when I would delete a lamppost from an image, it, it was a great show, but Image Studio was black and white, and when Photoshop came out, it just took over. One, because Letraset was a horrible software marketer, and two, the upgraded version, Color Studio, was too late, too complicated, and too slow, even though technically it was a better product. So this category, goes to Photoshop, right? Not so fast. What about Mac Paint? It was brilliant. People gasped when they first saw it on the bright paper white Mac screen, but honestly, it was a better Mac demo than usable software. I'm sorry. So the category winner is not so fast. Before there was Photoshop or Image Studio, there was Adobe Illustrator. It started out as an Adobe internal tool to provide a simpler, non-programmatic interface to creating Bezier curves and test PostScript on PostScript laser printers. Someone at Adobe said, hey, this would be a cool piece of software. As a pen and ink illustrator, Adobe Illustrator was complete magic. I could create scalable vector drawings, type designs, and logos. As much as I loved Illustrator, and as much as I loved the fact that John Warnick himself, the inventor of PostScript, gave me his personal copy of Illustrator. I still have it. I think the drawing category still has to go to Photoshop. There is no doubt a web browser has to be on this list. The question is, is it Mosaic or Netscape? Because they were both co-created by Mark Andreessen, they are kind of the same thing, yet they were not. Mosaic was more of a proof of concept, whereas Netscape was created as a business. So normally, I would give this category to the piece of software that popularized web browsing to a larger audience, but 
I remember playing with Mosaic and thinking that this internet thing was just shittier CD-ROM. But there was no dismissing the potential of having a portal to global data. Congratulations, Mosaic. Ivy, you spilled my drink. Another killer category was chat. The early heavyweights in this category were AOL AIM and Microsoft MSN Messenger. I'm declaring MSN Messenger as the winner because even though it is no longer with us, well, neither of them are really with us, it was more of a precursor to modern day chat than AIM. Young teenagers, especially girls, would vie to see who could collect the most child molesters as friends. This frightened parents, which made it very cool. So, because it showed us the future of just how dreadfully bad social media was going to be, I give this category to MSN Messenger. And if you're hearing that sound, that's our dog Ivy licking up some water. Finally, the last influential piece of personal computing software goes to the product that invented not just a category, but a business, careers, a lifestyle. It invented desktop publishing. And of course, I'm talking about PageMaker. I was going to create a category for the legendary combo of Windows Solitaire and Minesweeper, two of the greatest time wasters of all time, but I think PageMaker was more important. It's gone now, and its death was slow and unhappy at the hands of its ex-rival Adobe, but it was legendary. When I would demo it to large audiences at multimedia trade shows, just moving an image around the screen, plunking it down, and then seeing the text automatically wrap around it made people's jaws drop. The combination of the Mac, the laser printer, uh, the laser writer, and PageMaker revolutionized the print industry. That's it for the top 10 most influential pieces of desktop software, but I'm going to add just one more thing. This one is going to be controversial and uh, Okay, I'm just going to rip the bandage off and say it. Flash. We had to have Flash first before more open standards could catch up and kill it. YouTube was built using Flash. So was Netflix. Almost all sports channels used Flash. Print designers loved Flash because they could control all four corners of a website. So it looked and worked more like a printed document. Flash could even embed real Adobe typefaces into a website so print designers could exercise their favorite design aesthetic, making type so small no one could read it. But Flash needed frequent upgrading. Old Flash applications stopped working. As screens got bigger than 640 by 480, Flash sites started looking antiquated. It was often buggy as shit and a browser killer and Steve Jobs would not let it on his beloved iPhone. And Adobe just could not stop it from being a conduit for malware. Overall, the internet community was not thrilled with having one company in control of such an important technology. So I'm putting Flash in here, so revolutionary that it had to be killed off. What do you think? I'm sure you'll have your comments about what you thought I missed or disagreed with my selections. I love it when your comments are funny. I have the best denizens on this planet. So long, till next time.